Right, I've just finished cleaning all the parts in the degreaser in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. So here they are, all the mechanical parts from the body and all the fasteners for that matter. All clean and shiny, stripped of all the dirt and grease and ready for reassembly. Uh, please excuse the noise in the background, I've got the heat pump running. It's not a warm day today and the wind is whooshing outside. That'll also be adding to the background noise. Right, well I'll start uh, reassembling these parts. I notice that this chromed collar here is for the rewind knob is a bit bald in places. I don't know whether they've done a particularly crap job of uh, plating it or what. Perhaps I can find a shinier example to go on there. Right, I'll pull these parts to one side and I can start reassembling the body. Alright, I'm ready to start reassembling the body now. So I'm going to start putting in the, by putting in the lock lever and the release lever. So I'm using a bit of molybdenum lubricant and just applying a little bit here where the shafts run and in the body here where the return spring for the release lever runs and you just need a tiny smear so we'll start with the lock lever the lock lever's job is to lock the film advance when the frame counter reaches number one and I'll find its return spring there are two springs used here one for the release lever one for the lock lever the release lever has the uh, more coils it's a heavier spring the one for the uh, lock lever is a lighter spring and that's what goes on here and it's retained in place with a little circlip arrangement what's called a, an E-clip or a C-clip depending on uh, who you're talking to so I'll pop that into the slot, I'm holding that spring down with my thumb I just push that into place with the back of my tweezers just checking that that moves freely pops back into place, that's good then we have our release lever and the release lever's job is to release the film advance so that you can wind on to make the next exposure after you've fired the shutter so I'm, it's a little bit bent out of shape here, not much, quite subtle so I'm just going to uh, twist that back until the, until the alignment suits me better that'll do now I've got to fit that onto the shaft and that's always entertaining so I'll find my block of wood to work on and there's my spring where's my other tweezers Like all springs, it'll be doing its best to get onto the other side of the room and hiding in the corner. So basically, I've got to get the spring hooked around that boss there, the coil of the spring. 
Here it is, it even went without a fight. That's the spring there. That fits in this body, hole in the body. Just checking it's tucked back neatly. I'm holding that in place with my finger from below so that it doesn't get away. I can put the return spring on the top and the screw. That screw is very adjustable. The shutter release button or the shutter release shaft bears on that screw and so when you press down the shutter release it presses down that screw which presses down the shaft which disconnects the release lever from the cam on the base of the film advance shaft so those levers are in place. We'll get the adjustment position for this done later. You can't really get that set until the shutter's ready to go in, or is in. Right, so I'm starting now with my film advance lever. My film advance shaft. Now the shaft has like a ratchet or a ratchet cam on both the top and the bottom surfaces. They run in different directions. Effectively it's to ensure that when you start swinging the film advance lever in the advance direction it can only continue moving in the advance direction until it reaches the end of the stroke whereupon the release lever pops up to the top position through a gap here and then the lever can only rotate back the other way so you can't uh, inch the film advance on a retina reflex or most of the retinas for that means you can only swing them in a full swing with a lot of 35mm cameras particularly later SLRs you could inch the film advance you could swing it just a little bit repeatedly and it would advance the film you can't do that with this now the grease I'm using on this shaft is a graphite grease and I particularly like the graphite grease for this particular job because it's very good at sticking to surfaces and it uh, sticks to those sticks to the shaft and inside of the bush very well which means that basically it'll still be there for some time to come now I'm using some other lubricant here this is just a synthetic and I'm using that to do those ratchet uh, cam positions I'm just checking the alignment of the mounting plate here relative to the holes in the bottom of the cam there just so everything's lined up and that the spring is engaged in the slot that all looks good so I can swing put that into position in the body but first of all I need to put my film uh, spool in there, take up spool. Now this has a metal bush that pops into the base of it. So I can drop that into the back of the camera. And then I can drop my advance shaft into place. So I'm, first of all I'm just going to swing my lock lever out of the way.
and I know from experience where I want to start this so that I'll have correct tension. Um, if it was a rangefinder model, I would be starting it right there in its rest position and it would be wound one full turn and then the film advance lever would go on. With the reflex cameras, because they've got a lot of extra drag with the cam across the camera and so forth, they need a little bit of extra oomph for that return spring, so I normally advance them by one third of a turn. Now I'm just holding back my release lever so that this can drop down into place. Of course it's not doing so. Let's check what's happening. That's better. The spring sometimes dislodges and then doesn't want to drop down into place. That's it. Checking I've got this in the correct position. That should be round a bit further. Just there. That's good. And uh, three screws. Thought that one had tipped over on its side, that's always entertaining, you've got to fish them back out and start again. And it wasn't the case. Get one screw started, check that everything else is in line. Check that my film spool is pressed down, that's smooth, it's moving, it means that that spring didn't fall out of place. And I have two more screws. These screws are commonly found to be loose when you're taking cameras apart. Um, screws throughout the camera tend to come loose over time. That's um, nothing particularly unusual and nothing to be particularly concerned about. It just needs to be a problem to be rectified. Okay, I've got two of my screws started. One of them just doesn't want to start. Let's see if I can get it lined up better Is it fallen over I think I'll just have to uh, reposition this advance let's come back around here Swing that out of the way. Let's rotate this. It's one of these jobs you can do with three hands for. Now it's jamming on that screw now. Now I can see it. Is it going to go into the hole? Yep. Okay, screw started. All three screws are started. I can drive them home, make sure they're snug. Alright, this shaft, its rest position would be. Oh. That's the rest position. That's the position it would be in once it's been rotated another full turn from here to give it sufficient return tension. And that's the position the film advance lever would be fitted. So that's good. That can sit there for now. I can deal with the top. Just checking everything moves smoothly. And I've got some film advance components to go on here. And the first thing I think I need to do is take these components which form the clutch and assemble them. And again I'm going to use that graphite based grease 
because it forms a very good film on those metal parts and uh, stops any act, any uh, scouring. You get this spring, steel spring. Um, it's reasonably sharp edges, I suppose, on it, and it can actually rub up the metal and uh, cause some roughness. This spring has a little tab on it, and that little tab has to sit engaged with the slot here. I'll zoom you in a bit, see if you can see that. There's a little slot here and that tab has to engage with it. Now I'm using some automotive uh, electrical crimp pliers to hold that spring in and I rotated that um, whole unit. This piece only goes on one way, it's got a recess in the top recess in the bottom really. Recess goes down at this stage. And there is our unit all together. And it will rotate much more smoothly in one direction than the other. Um, and the direction it's rotating in much more smoothly is, is the correct position for our use. So uh, that's all that's required. So I'll put a bit of my synthetic grease in the centre where it runs on the film advance shaft and can drop that into position. Now there's two little drive pins on the bottom of that uh, section and they engage with the film sprocket. So you can see the hat rotating as I move the film sprocket there. And the next section is the guide. The, this guides the top of the film advance shaft, stops it from flopping about. Its other main task is it holds the coupling gear here. And that coupling gear couples the action of the film advance shaft down the centre through to the sprocket. Uh, film spool there. Yeah. I'm just rubbing a bit of putting a bit of grease in there. That all looks good. That can drop down in the body to give it a bit of a wiggle. So that, that's why the top of that clutch, the geared part, is engaging with this geared piece here. So I rotate that slightly, that makes those parts engage. We have a single screw on this side, a uh, pan head screw, fairly long, just drops down to the casting. And here at the front, I'll turn that around so you can see it, this is where the ratchet goes that stops, makes sure that the film advance can only rotate in one direction. So here we have a spacer that it sits on. That spacer is slightly countersunk on the inside at one end. Now the countersunk goes down. You want the flat side up. If you don't have the flat side up, it'll assemble nicely. But then what happens is that Let's get this in the right way around. It'll assemble nicely, but as soon as you tighten the screw, it binds up. Because the screw has a shoulder, which stops it from going down too deep. Effectively means that the little ratchet pull here is loose on that shaft. If you have it the wrong way up, the shoulder just falls down into the countersunk hole and so the screw just binds up 
and the ratchet won't move. Now occasionally you'll find cameras where the last person in wasn't aware of the cause of that problem. One of two things happens in that case. Either they've done the screw up but the ratchet is actually pulled back out of the way so it's not engaging anything. Or they discovered that when every time they did the screw up tight it locked the ratchet and so they loosened the screw off slightly. Which means that the whole mechanism could fall out of place. So I'm just doing those screws up quite lightly because like I may need to move those. But there we have the guide bush all in place and the little ratchet pawl which runs against the film advance there. So we'll continue assembling the film advance and I'll zoom you back in a bit. So here I'm using a bit of synthetic grease this piece can drop on and drops over there and as I rotate it you can see that the ratchet pulls into place and normally I would just have that aligned front to back while I'm working on it I'll just check my alignment at the bottom to see that's in the standard position or the neutral position rotate that round to the front again This uh, drive dog arrangement serves to ensure that the film advance only moves the film on a full half, half turn. It's about 180 degrees sweep. And then you have to return it to the start position before it'll go. Now I've got that spring in the wrong place. The spring goes down first. concave side up washer goes on there and our gear this gear drives the cocking rack for the shutter Now let's get that screw run down. That gear of course has a squared hole in the middle which engages with the squared top of the film advance shaft. You have to, you have to be careful assembling it so that it actually stays in place while I'm doing the screw up and doesn't shift um, otherwise you can end up with entertaining problems right so we have that part done and next I want to put in the lock lever I'll zoom you back out you'll never see got to put in the lock lever for the uh, rewind button and I think I've got that carefully put here aside, ready to go. There's the lock lever. And it's spring. And it's shoulder screwy. So, that little lock lever for the rewind button. Its job is to hold the rewind button depressed after you've pushed it in. Until the film advance is moved again, in which case the lever is swung by the film advance, unlatches the rewind 
and allows that all to drop back into place again. So I'll position the spring and the screw. The screw has two shoulders on it, one that the spring can revolve neatly around and the other one for the lever and I'll just snug that up that's all in position that's good and all I have to do is get the end of that spring back over behind that lever so with a couple of pairs of tweezers I should be able to do this And it's proving awkward. I think I've got must be a crappy pair of tweezers, these ones. I've got multiple pairs of tweezers, which is handy because you'd be in the middle of a job and you've managed to mutilate your tweezers and you need another pair to use instead. That's oh just about at it then. It's claiming success before I had success. Okay, it's back behind there now. The spring's where it needs to be. And now need to fit the film sprocket and the film sprocket shaft. The rewind button, its return spring and that washer. So the film sprocket shaft, I normally put some lubricant on the shaft towards the top, towards the bottom. That's where it runs through the casting. Normally for good measure I run some onto the teeth where it engages the gear up here. Our film sprocket shaft goes in one way up. It's got a slot at the top here. That's where the screw runs, that's where the screw runs through to the sprocket shaft and that screw drives the film sprocket. Now that's, I can't get my shaft in so I'm just going to loosen these screws up slightly which will just give me a little bit more room down there. Kodak must have mucked with the alignment of some of these components during production. The rangefinder cameras, you have no trouble getting this piece in. The reflex cameras, you've often got to wriggle to get that shaft down. It's blocked by the teeth on the gear above, or by the edge of the teeth on the gear above. The difference is very slight, but uh, it does mean that you can only really do those screws up at the top after you have this shaft in place. So the shaft's in place. I'm holding it in position with my finger here, applying some upward pressure. I'll swing that lock lever back out of the way. I'm going to rotate my film sprocket until it, to engage the gear. It's popped up into position. That's now in position. So that means that the gears are engaged at the top between these two pieces here. So I can fit my little screw in that uh, drives that shaft. And we need that because we're going to be trying to tighten up the rewind button. And I'll have nothing to tighten it up against if I haven't got that in place. And get that screw started. It's very reluctant today. Just 
pull this out of your view for a second and see if I can get that lined up. It looks more like the hole. It is very reluctant. Just pause for a second while I uh, sort this out. 